Hello, everyone, and welcome to Podcasting Basics. My name is Dave Kearney, and I'm glad you're here. We're going to walk through just how to get a podcast started in a weekend. In three days or less, you can get a podcast going. I know you can because I did it myself. So who am I? I've been podcasting for a couple of years now. I have over 150 published episodes on two different formats, two different podcasts I created, which I'll show you in a moment. And I get the pleasure of interviewing guests from all over the world. I've met people from Australia, from Saudi Arabia, from all over the United States, Canada, just pretty much everywhere, except Antarctica, I guess. Everywhere in the world, I've met people, and it's been amazing. It's been an amazing experience getting to hear different people, um, their you know, how they teach, um, what their, their morals and their, their ideas are, um, in, in the education world. So it's been, it's been a a fantastic, um, time for me and a fantastic just learning experience. So here's my two podcasts. I started with the supersize phys ed podcast, which I still run. That's kind of my solo episodes. And it's also when I interview guests one-on-one and then recently Myself and Justin Schleider created Around the Horn Health and Phys Ed, or Health and PE, uh, we call it or just Around the Horn. Uh, it's kind of like ESPN Around the Horn, where we have a, a panel of guests, we have a group of guests, and we give them points based on their answers, and we declare a winner at the end. It's, it's a lot of fun. We have a timer, and we have uh, like a, a buzzer that goes off when their time is up, and it's, it's just a lot of fun. So it's a different kind of format, but these are the two that I host right now. So here's the big question. The big question for you. How do you want to be heard? Now, I'm guessing you're listening to this because you want to be heard in the world. And that's why I did podcasting. Now, there's three kind of main ways, as you know. There's YouTube, blogging, and podcasting. And I did a little blogging, but I type really slow, so that wasn't for me. I do some YouTube. I do some recording of videos of games and behind the scenes at PE. But my favorite thing is podcasting. I just love to podcast because I love podcasts and that's what got me into this. And I know that listening to podcasts, it's the way a lot of people listen now. They listen at the gym, they listen on the way to work and in the car. I listen to it also when I'm going for a walk or a jog or a bike ride. And so I I can't watch YouTube when I do that. I can't read when I do that. And that's the way I like to consume content. So that's the way I like to put out content. So why podcasting? I'm going to give you some more facts about podcasting. In 2020, 51% of Americans over 12 have listened to podcasts. And it's just going to keep growing. It keeps growing every year. Now, when I started listening to podcasts five or six years ago, there weren't as many. And there were still a lot, but there weren't as many. And it was just starting to get going uh, probably more like eight, nine years ago, 10 years ago. But it's just growing every year. 32% 32% listen at least once a month to a podcast. So again, these are all growing numbers. They li- they listen on average to six shows. They subscribe to at least six shows, which if you looked at my feed, it's more than six. It's just all different categories, just different ideas, different things I want to hear. And also some similar things like in PE, I listen to uh, four or five different shows in PE and then other shows on c- true crime or just uh, random shows, things like that, so sports Whatever you want. There's just, but people listen to podcasts. So in advertising, you'll hear a lot of the same advertisers on podcasts. They spent over $500 million on advertising last year. And again, these numbers keep growing because they know that watching commercials on TV, it, you know, with people with DVRs and and different platforms to watch TV, like Hulu and, and things like just regular, you know, advertising just doesn't work anymore and it's expensive. So podcasting is the way to go. Two million podcasts are listened by listed by Google, and that's that's just again crazy numbers. But it's the truth, and it doesn't mean you can't stand out because you can. And we're going to talk about that. And then Joe Rogan just signed a huge contract with Spotify, a hundred million dollar deal. And again, that just shows the power of podcasting, the power of you know his brand just continue to grow or keep growing, just like your brand can keep growing. And it's not too late to start. I keep hearing that. It is not too late. I thought it was too late a couple of years ago. It is not too late to start. I see podcasts starting all the time. And is this is like the golden age of podcasting, okay? In 10, 20, 30 years, we're going to be like, wow, that's when I should have started a podcast in 2020. So where do I begin? So 
this is the, this is what I want to cover today. Like, how do you just start a podcast? You know, um, you could look online, you could ask people and, and this is why I'm doing this because I want to give you the basics because I've done this for a lot of years. And even before I started making podcasts, I was researching podcasts and listening to podcasts. And so I think I've a, I'm a pretty good judge of where to start. All right. So first you need to think about what do you want to get out of this? Like, why are you podcasting? Do you want your voice in the world? Do you just want to be heard? Do you want a platform to express your opinions and ideas and content? Do you want to make connections? Again, I've made lots of connections with people just through the podcast. I have people come up to me at uh, Shape Florida and uh, the, the National um, Shape Convention. They're like, hey, that's that's you. You're, you're the podcaster. You do Super Size Phys Ed. I'm like, yeah. And it's it's been great meeting people like that. It's been fantastic. Do you want to build a brand? Do you want to build like just your name? You want to get your name out there and you want to you know sell things and you want to um, just promote your content and promote your ideas. And then finally, do you want to make money? And that's, there's nothing wrong with making money. There's nothing wrong with this. And it's okay to be this guy, to want to be this guy. There he is. But that's about how long it takes to make money in podcasting. I'm not kidding you. To make money in podcasting is not easy. It's, it's okay to make money. And I'm going to tell you some ways to make money, but it's not always easy. So sponsors is very difficult at first. On average, you need 10,000 downloads per episode to start making money from sponsors. Now, there might be some smaller businesses that reach out to you that's in their, their niche that might want to sponsor you for a small fee or a small you know amount, and that's, that's great. But it's very difficult to get these high-end, big-name sponsors until you become really big like the Joe Rogans. Maybe not that big, but big. Okay, affiliate marketing, marketing is a strong possibility. Now, what you do with that is you sign up for their affiliate programs like um, how I, I did through Buzzsprout, where that's my uh, podcasting host, hosting service. So I get I haven't even put this out yet, but I, I, get, uh, I will get a cut of a part of commission every time somebody signs up for Buzzsprout. And you can do that with Audible. You can do that with Amazon. Lots of good things out there. You can make a little money here and there, and it all adds up, so it's not a bad idea. You could promote your own products. Now, this is a great idea. This is where I promote my courses. I only have two. Um, I'm working on my third one right now, but this is where I've, I've made some money here. Not a ton, but it helps with the podcast. It helps grow the podcast. And it's a really good idea to promote your own PDFs or books or you know eBooks, you know v- courses, things like that. Now, you can coach people one-on-one or group coaching. You could promote that if you position yourself as an expert in the field. You can try to get some groups together or uh, small coaching groups together through Facebook and other uh, groups um, online. And then you could coach people or coach them one-on-one on Zoom, things like that. Okay, Patreon is where people donate. They give you, they push a button and they give you five bucks a month or a dollar a month or per episode. So that's, again, not a bad idea once you get established. I wouldn't do this right away. I still haven't done it. Um, nothing wrong with it, but I, I haven't done it yet unless you want to give extra stuff. And I'd get your name out there first before you do that. So first things first, where do you start? Ground zero. All right, so you need a name that's catchy and understandable. Now, I'll admit there are times when I feel like I should not have picked the Super Size Phys Ed podcast because it sounds like, uh, I don't know, some super big colossal thing. And what I meant to, I guess, portray, portray? I meant to portray is uh, large groups of PE. And I'm not sure if I got that across or not. I think by now people know that, but it took a little bit. And so make sure it's catchy, but it's it, people can understand what it is. If you just say this is the Dave Carney show, like they're not going to know what that is. So something that's catchy, but people know what it is right away. I mean, unless you're a, you're already a brand name, if you're already Joe Rogan, then you could call it the Joe Rogan Experience. If you're already Adam Carolla, you can call it the Adam Carolla Podcast. I mean, like if you if people know who you are already, that's fine. If they don't, then make sure they don't they understand it. So you have to think about what what are you going to say? Now, I decided I was going to talk about large group PE. It did expand more into um, different ideas, different guests that are not large group PE teachers. It expanded also to more like um, inspirational, I, I guess I want to say. Like I'm trying to uh, look for inspiration in places and, and, and give a PE twist to it. So think about what you're going to say. Now, you can always branch out. But you don't want to be so general that nobody's going to listen to it. You want to be specific 
and then you could always make it bigger from there. So with length, there's really is no correct answer. Now the, the experts will say 20 to 25 minutes is a good time because that's the average commute of a person to work. But you know, you have people like Tim Ferriss that are doing an hour to two hour interviews, Lewis Howes, same thing. You have some people that are putting together like Mike Rowe, like five to eight minute podcasts. Now there's no correct answer, but the correct answer really is you go as long as it, it takes to get your point across and not too much for, you know, longer, but also not too much shorter, like get your point across and you want to keep it sort of simple and sort of consistent because when I do a long form podcast, people know it's about an hour. When I do a shorter one, it's between, I don't know, anywhere between five and 15 minutes. That's a little, that varies a little bit. So, but you want, there's no correct answer, but you want to make sure you're semi-consistent and people know what to expect. So you have to decide if you're going to do solo by yourself, interview style, like one-on-one or a group. Now I've done all three. I suggest you do solo at first. Get your voice out there and also get practicing. Practice just talking into the microphone like I'm doing now. I'm not, I'm not perfect and it's been a long time. It takes a while, but practice with solo ideas, get, get about 50 ideas down and, and, de- and decide what you're going to talk about. I'd say episode one would be, or I even put an episode zero out just saying, Hey, I'm going to be putting a podcast out. Um, you know, look for me here <laughs> in the future. Um, I'm going to put some out pretty soon about PE and, and large groups and, Hopefully it'll bring you some value kind of thing. So that those are solo episodes. And um, I, I did solo for a long time. And then I started interviewing people. And you'll find that mo- a lot of people have done the same thing in, in the podcasting space. They, they've done lots of solo and then they decided to branch out a little bit um, to get new and fresh ideas and get new people on the show and to, just to branch out in general. I think that's a great way to go. And then finally, I did. that's when I started the group one. We started the Around the Horn um, I've done a couple other ones that were a group um, podcast, more like a roundtable discussion, just two or three of us, not a big, big group. But the the large group we have sometimes on Around the Horn is up to 10 people, um, plus the two, me, myself and Justin as a co-host. So it's there have been up to 12 people on the show at a time, but it's also been four or five. So you need to decide. I would not do group first. I would do solo, then maybe interview, then group, if that's what you'd like. So this is the main thing, frequency, keep it consistent. So the average length, I heard this today or yesterday, something, the average length of a podcast is about eight episodes and then people give up. Now, not everybody, but a lot of podcasts die after seven to eight episodes because it just, it gets stale. People don't want to put in the time commitment. And if you keep it consistent, that's when you'll start to grow. So I started with three a week. I want to do something totally different. Now, different in the education PE space. I was doing three a week. I was putting out Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and I was recording after school in my office. And it was it was good. It was real good. But it got got <laughs> difficult at, at times coming up with content, editing. I'm I'm better at editing now than I was then. But just getting everything together, and I don't think the quality was there. The quantity was there, but the quality wasn't there. And so, I would say. As long as people know, hey, every Tuesday at seven in the morning, it's coming out, they'll be happy. Like, I know that certain episodes come out on certain days. You know, there's a true crime podcast I follow that I know that he puts out episodes on Sunday mornings and then follow ups on Friday mornings. And I know that it's every single week. And so I know when to listen to it. And there's, I'm a big fan of The Office. I'm going to give you one there. The Office Ladies. I know it comes out every Wednesday morning. Um, just because it goes behind the scenes of the office, um, episode by episode. So these, they're consistent though. Now for a while I wasn't consistent. I was Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then I was Monday, Friday. And then I was like, I think Tuesday only. And then, uh, now since everything's been going on, I've had more time. I've been doing Mondays and Fridays, but keep it consistent as much as you can. And think about who, who is this for and not for so again, when I originally put this out, it was for just large groups of, of PE teachers. It wasn't for the small groups. I did branch that out a little bit. And I, I mean, I'll talk to anybody, but I, and especially in the beginning, like who is this for? Is this for beginners, intermediate, experts? I, I, I'm trying to cater more to the beginner to intermediate teachers. 
And um, if people want to listen to their experts, that's that's awesome. But you know, I'm trying to gear it towards a certain crowd, and that's that. You know, that's my goal. All right, let's talk about equipment. It is not as much as you think. It's not as much. I promise. You need the right stuff. A computer is, <laughs> you got to start with a computer. You got to have a computer. Yes, even a phone will do. I know people that record right on their phone. They have a phone and they have a microphone. You do need to choose wisely. We'll talk about that. So you can get away with a 20 to $30 microphone to begin with. That's what I did. But you might want to upgrade as you get going. And you need to choose which kind of microphone. That's really important. We'll talk about that. So editing. It's, it does separate the good from the great. There are some episodes I just listened to recently, and I'm not going to mention names because they're great people, but their editing just isn't there. And I'm not, again, an expert on editing, but it's hard to say editing. But you have to edit. You have to cut out some of the dead space, some of the ums and ahs and the loud breathing and stuff like that, which I can't stand that I do a lot. So you need to edit. It, it takes some time. It takes some work. It takes some practice, but you need to edit. And hosting, this is where a there's a lot of options. It depends on paid or free, but you get what you pay for. And so, again, we'll talk about that, your needs and your budget. So these are my three microphones. Actually, I have one more, but I don't really use it. So I started with the one on the – from. I'm going to start from left to right. So on the one on the left is the Blue Ice Snowball, I believe it's called. And although it's white, there are blue ones. I started with that because I saw my uh, music teacher at my school had one for recording uh, some of their singing, some of the the group, like the choir type singing. And so I decided to get that. And if you listen to my early episodes, that's what I used. And that was good for the first, I don't know, 50 episodes. You could tell a difference, though. When I got the one in the middle, the road, that is a much higher quality, not a ton. I'm going to give you some prices. Um, The Blue Snowball... When I bought it, it was probably in the 30s or $40 range. I'm not sure, right right around there, probably now. The Rode was about 100 and it also came with headphones and a couple things. And I think they're both really good, but those are condenser microphones. And it took me a while. I didn't understand the difference. A condenser microphone picks up all the extra stuff. And it, were, it was they're, they're good stuff. They're good microphones, but it picks up all the um, the, the extra sounds in the background. Now, I'm sure this picks up some of the sounds the one I'm recording on now. I'm actually recording on the one on the far right, right right now, currently. And this is the ATR. Uh, they don't make it anymore, I guess. It's kind of been discontinued. 2100. These are all USB ones. And actually, the best part of this one I have now is it's USB and XLR. And that's just nothing you need to really worry about now. But I would definitely, if you're going to plug in a computer, get a, get a USB one, look at the reviews, this one's a good one. It was um, it was a little less, actually. It was probably like $79, $80, but it also came with um, some extra stuff as well. So anyways, that is um, the three I have and three I've used. They're all good in different ways. And as a matter of fact, the one in the middle of the road, that's a fantastic brand. It really is. It's a great brand. But um, one of, some of my best episodes really came from when I when I used the road at uh, Starbucks and I interviewed people at Shape Florida and you know you could hear the background noise it was kind of cool you could hear the background noise or when I interviewed my my former students and some people at the pool when we did camps summer camp and you could hear the extra noise in the background it does sound really neat but you don't always want that background noise and so I really like the one on the far right that that is a oh I forgot to tell you it's a dynamic microphone so dynamic means it will pick up only what's kind of around the microphone. So I'm talking a little closer, not super close, but a little closer than normal because it'll just pick up the sound around around me and around the microphone itself. So for editing, there are two main free softwares available. There's Audacity, and that is mostly for if you use a, like a PC, um, that kind of thing. And it, GarageBand is for... Apple. Now, I believe you can get them for both, um, either one. You can download them, whatever. But for the most part, I've always used GarageBand. I've only used Audacity a little bit at school. They're both pretty much the same. You'll see all these waves, and you'll see if you can figure out how to cut the waves and split the regions. And 
just mix and match. And that's a whole nother episode. That's a whole big thing, but you do need to edit. Now you can even look at YouTube versions on how to do this. I'm going to put out some extra things on how to edit extra videos, things like that. This is, this could be a whole nother episode, a whole nother 60 minutes of editing, but it's not as hard as you think. There's lots of stuff there. It looks a little scary at first, but it is not as bad as you think. And once you get the hang of it, it's it's really simple. It takes a little bit, but it's very, very, very important. I can't stress that enough. You have to edit the the episodes. You have to. So for hosting, let's talk about the best hosting platforms. I, I actually looked this up. Now, I'm sure it was sponsored by somebody, but it, Buzzsprout is what I use. I love Buzzsprout because it, um, first of all, I, I used to use Podomatic, and that got too expensive. They charge you for um, storage. They charge you tons of money for storage. And they'll give you a little bit, but then it just, by the time you record, uh, I don't even know how many episodes, it just, you just have to pay, 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 pay. This Buzzsprout and most of the ones now, they, uh, from like a monthly fee, it's unlimited storage. Now I will back those up on my computer or like a thumb drive or something. I'll back up all my episodes just in case, but this is what I use. I love the the statistics. I love that I can make little sound bites, things like that, that I put, put online. It's been a great hosting platform for me. And it's not that expensive. When I started, it was pretty much 12 bucks a month. Now, depending on how much you want to, how many hours a month you want to put in, or you want to put out actually, then it gets a little more expensive, but it's not too bad. I really, I, I love it for, for $12 a month. Pretty much. It's been great. Captivate. Now, I don't know much about this, uh, Captivate. It's pretty much the same. Some of these, Transistor, I've heard is really good. Uh, Simplecast. These are, all, these are all in the top five of uh, a lot of lists I, lo- I looked at. Podbean is a cheap one. And Anchor is the one that I see a lot of people, especially in the PE or education field, use. I, um, I don't know that much about, about it. I know it's free to start. So that's always a good, you know, that's always good. Free is always good. I will say you probably get what you pay for if it's free as far as getting you know stats. Um, again, you, I don't think you could do the sound bites. I'm not positive about all this, but I, again, if you want to start on, on, on the cheap, Anchor is the way to go. Um, I'm just a little weary of it, but you know, check it out. It's, there's, there's all good options here. So now you got to get published. How are you going to do that? I like this picture, by the way. Here's my quick start guide. So Canva, here are the dimensions you need. You go to Canva, it's free, mostly unless you want to pay for some specific things, like I believe on my supersized phys ed artwork, um, the whistle, I might have paid a dollar for just to get the rights to it. Um, so it, there are little fees here and there, but for the most part, and actually for educators, if you uh, sign up, it took a while to get it back. It took a couple months for them to respond, but I have Canva for free now because I'm an educator. So I get lots of cool stuff. You can create your own artwork. Um, that's again, I'm giving you the cheapest stuff here, and it's really good. So Fiverr is paid. I've never used this, but I've heard a ton about it. So you can put out a, I guess like a a feed to the group saying, "Hey, I need a, you know, I need a, I'm starting a podcast. I need some graphic design work done." And then um, people bid on it, and so you can go that way if you want to pay for it. Now the show notes. Um, there there are many different ways to do this. You can do none. You could do kind of what I do, which is in the in the episode itself, like the episode notes, or you can do it, you know, completely separate, like in a a blog post, things like that. But it's I think it's pretty important to put out what you are, what your podcast is about, and what each episode is covering. Okay, even if it's bullet points, give give them the the basic outline of what you're covering, so people can look at it and say, hey, I want to listen to this, or no, this is not for me. Now you gotta get listed in Apple. And Apple and Spotify are the biggest ones. You have to get listed in them, especially Apple. Again, this is these are whole other episodes. Or go to YouTube and just look it up. That's what I did on how to get listed on Apple. But you have to do this kind of kind of work first. And here's some of the extra stuff I want to talk about. First of all, like I said before, now is the time. Don't say, "Well, I should have started a year ago." I'll tell you what. When I started a couple, like about two years ago, I had already been thinking about it for about a year, and I didn't do it. And I, I still kind of regret that, but I'm glad I started when I did because, you know, you just, just keep putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. I'm telling you, now is the time. You will regret it in five years. If you really want a podcast, if this is for you and you're like, man, I should have done that five years ago, we'll do it now. Put out at least three when you start, maybe even more because people like 
they like Netflix type things. If they like your show, they're going to binge it and they're going to keep going. So put out at least three if you're going to start. Be consistent. Like I said, put out. don't just put out three and then never hear from people. You know, never put out another one until another couple months. Okay, you got to be consistent. There are some shows and were some shows I listen to like religiously in, in PE, the PE world, education. And they, they were, it was awesome. I went back, I listened to all of them and then they didn't put out another one for like a couple months. And it's like, if they lose the momentum and then I just unsubscribed. So, you know, be consistent. Even if it's, if it's once a month, tell people, Hey, this is a once a month thing, but you better put a lot of work into it. If it's once a month, it better have like free PDFs at the end and, and just cool stuff. I would suggest once a week just to keep the momentum going though. Okay. And like I said, <laughs> three episodes or more to start. You will get better over time. It takes a while. I'm still not great on the microphone. I'm, I'm better than I was two years ago. I know that. So you will get better over time. You'll get more comfortable talking to a microphone with nobody else in the room. It's kind of weird. Sometimes you'll get used to it. So plan it out, write it out, draw it out, type it out, whatever you want to do, an outline of what you're going to do, the format. Here's how it's going to go. Here's what I'm going to say. Look for inspiration wherever you can and find if there's inspiration everywhere. I just put on a podcast not that long ago. Inspiration is everywhere. Just look around and you don't have to be ever, better than everyone. Just different. Be different. Okay. The, the reason why I chose large group PE is because that's what I'm good at. That's what I teach. I teach over 130 kids or between 100, 130, 35 kids every day, every class period. And so that's what I'm really good at. There are other teachers that are really good at other things and they're good at technology and they're good at um, gamification and they're good at TGFU and they're good at all this stuff. I love all that, but I'm not, I'm not great at that. This is my thing. I teach large groups. So guess what? I'm putting out a large group PE podcast. That's what I've been doing. And so do what you're good at and, but be different. You, if you're just doing a PE type thing or, or an education type thing, it's too broad. You got to get niche it down a little bit. And have fun. That's the biggest thing. Have fun. This should be fun. This shouldn't, I mean, it's work. It definitely is work, but it should be fun. And hopefully you'll get to meet awesome people and you'll uh, get your name out there. You get your voice out there. You'll get heard. You get your opinions out there. And that's what this is all about. So have fun. This is, this is fun. I, I enjoy this. I wouldn't have done this for a couple of years if I hadn't enjoyed this. I wouldn't have made a new podcast, the Around the Horn one. If I didn't enjoy podcasting in the first place, I, I, I love what this, what I do. I love this. So if you want to do this now, get it going now and have fun with it. Well, thanks for listening. I appreciate all of you that tuned in. Let me know if you have any questions. I am at supersizephyzed.com. You can reach out to me. My email's in there and all the contact information. I, I'd love to hear from you and hear how this has hopefully impacted you and inspired you to create your own podcast. If you have any questions, please let me know. I will help you through it as best as I can, but put in the work and just have fun with it. It's fun. And I thank you again for tuning in.